Hi there, Father's Heart Kids. I'm just so excited to be here with you all again. So for those of you who are new here at Father's Heart Kids, I would just like to give you all a warm welcome and let you know that you are so, so welcome here with us. And then for everyone else, welcome back. I'm just so happy to have you all here today. And I just know we're going to have so much fun today in God's presence. So before we get going, let's all quickly close our eyes so we can pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for another amazing day that we just get to spend in your presence. Thank you for being with us during this week and bringing us all together here at Father's Heart Kids. Please be with us in today's lesson and help us to concentrate and remember what we are going to learn from our lesson and Bible story of today. In Jesus' name we pray this and we all say, Amen. Awesome guys. So now it's time now to sing some songs to God and to show Him just how much we love Him. So quickly jump up and get ready to dance and sing for Jesus.
Wow, guys. Thank you for dancing with me. Wasn't that just so much fun? I absolutely love spending time in God's presence and just singing and dancing for Him. Don't you just love these moments where we get now to show God how much we love Him through praise and worship? I know I definitely do. And it's definitely one of my favorite parts of the lesson. Uh, and remember, guys, praise and worship isn't just for Sundays. We can praise and worship God anytime and anywhere we like. But anyways, let's get right now into today's lesson. So today we are moving to a new book of the Bible. We are now jumping to the book of Joshua. Now, I really know it feels like we are skipping a lot. But remember, our beginner's Bible only highlights certain stories in the Bible to teach us as we are beginners and it's going to teach us the basics. So last week we were reading the book of Numbers and we talked about the story of the 12 spies. Do you guys still remember the story? Okay, well, maybe we can do a quick recap for everyone who maybe is new or maybe just to refresh our memories. So in our story of last week, we read how God told Moses to send 12 spies into now the promised land to see what it's now like and then they needed to come back and give them feedback on what they saw. So when they now got back, 10 of the 12 spies were very negative and they said that they can't do it and it's just not going to go well. But the other two spies were now full of faith and they said they could do it and they just needed to trust God. So do you guys remember who those two spies were? That's right, it was Joshua and Caleb. So from our story, we learned that we need to be like Joshua and Caleb and really just trust God above what we can see. And we must not be like now the, uh, uh, the Israelites who didn't have faith in God and listened now to the 10 negative spies. And guys, we also learned that because of their lack of faith and complaining and also their disobedience towards God, the Israelites had to wander in the desert for 40 years. And to top it off, some of them weren't even allowed to enter into the promised land anymore. Now, do you guys remember who was allowed to go into the promised land? Yes, that's right. It was Joshua and Caleb and the next generation of the Israelites. And do you guys remember why Joshua and Caleb were the only two of their generation who was allowed to enter the promised land? Well, guys, it was because they trusted God. Remember, they rather walked by faith and not by sight like the other ten spies. And because of that, God rewarded them. So guys, in a nutshell, that is now what we learned last week. So now remember I said we are going to skip to a new book of the Bible for today. Now, the first part that we are skipping is the rest of the book of Numbers, as it just basically tells us what happens now in the 40 years that the Israelites now wander in the desert. Okay, and then the next part that we are going to skip is the book of Deuteronomy. Now, in the book of Deuteronomy, the older generation who rebelled against God has now passed away, and the new generation with Joshua and Caleb was getting ready to finally enter into the promised land. And we can also find in the rest of the book of Deuteronomy, Moses giving this very long speech to the new generation and encouraging them now to be different from the previous uh, generation and to love and obey God. So also, unfortunately, at the end of Deuteronomy, we read how Moses passes away. And then that's when Joshua is now the new one who will lead God's people to the promised land and to victory. So today we are looking at the book of Joshua. And today's story is called Joshua and the Spies. And it's now based on Joshua chapter 2. So let's quickly read it together. Joshua and the Spies. Joshua chapter 2. After Moses died, Joshua became the leader of the Israelites. God led them into the promised land. He led them to a city called Jericho. The city was protected by high walls. Still, two spies found a way into the city. They went to Rahab's house. The king of Jericho ordered his soldiers to capture the men. Rahab 
hit the men on her roof. When the shoulders arrived, she said, The spies have already gone. If you hurry, you might catch them. So the soldiers ran off to find them. Thank you for helping us, the spies told her. When we come back, we promise to save you and your family. Then Rahab helped the spies escape. Now guys, I know it's kind of sad starting our story off with Moses who passed away. But think about it. We did learn a lot from his life. And we must just always remember all those valuable lessons that we've learned from his life. Plus, think about it. We will see him in heaven. So no need to worry. So guys, today we are carrying on with our story where Joshua has now taken the lead over the Israelites after the 40 years that they had to spend in the wilderness. So Joshua, Caleb and the new generation of the Israelites have now finally entered into the promised land, which was called the land of Canaan. Now guys, I'm just so excited for them as this was such a long journey and it was long awaited. So now that they are now in their land that God has promised them, God told them to start cleaning up the land by getting the evil people out and destroying all the idols. So one of the cities that they had to get to while now cleaning up the land was the city called Jericho. But guys, Jericho had these huge, huge walls around it. So no one could just get in and take it from them. So Joshua sent spies to see if they could find a way in and see what was going on inside these walls. So the spies did now find a way in and they found that the city was filled with lots of bad people who were worshipping idols and they were just living in sin and doing very bad stuff. And while in the city, they, this is now where they met Rahab. And she was also one of the people living in the city. And she also had a lot of sin and she was also doing lots of wrong things. But yet, there was something a little bit different about it. So, now before the Israelites even arrived at Canaan, the people knew who they were because the people in Canaan have now heard about what God has done for them and how he saved them from the Egyptians. So, Naturally, the people were very afraid of the Israelites and of God. But Rahab saw the truth. She realized that the God of the Israelites was the only true God. And all the idols that they were now worshipping, she realized that it was just false gods. So when the spies now came to her, she helped them because she wanted to change her ways and get to know this God that the Israelites served. And in return... The spies promised that they would save her and her family. Now, do you guys think it was easy for Rahab to help the spies? Well, I personally think it couldn't have been easy for her. In fact, I think she was most likely so scared because she knew she had to lie to the king and she had to put herself now in danger because if they had found them on her roof, they most probably would have killed Rahab. But she helped them anyway because she trusted God. And she knew that this God she heard of, the God who did all these amazing things for the Israelites, he was bigger than her king. Now how amazing is that, guys? She hasn't even had a relationship with God yet, but she already trusted that he will come through for her and save her. So you see, God had actually a very special plan for Rahab. Even though she wasn't now an Israelite, God welcomed her into his family. And because of her faith she had in him, she was saved. And guys, that is just so amazing for me. Because Rahab is just such a big inspiration and we can learn so much from her. So what she did was actually so amazing that she is even mentioned in the New Testament of the Bible. And we can see this in the book of Hebrews. Let me actually show you guys this quickly. We can see it now in Hebrews 11 verse 31. It was by the faith that Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God. For she has given a friendly welcome to the spies. You see, guys, she is praised in this verse for her faith in God. And it's just so awesome because, you see, this just goes to show that 
Anyone can change their ways and anyone can be saved and can be used by God. So it doesn't matter now where you come from or what color your skin is or if you're now rich or poor or even how you were raised. It doesn't even matter, guys, if you are now bad in the past or even if you are sinful now at the moment. Because, guys, nothing can stop God from saving you. And, guys, also... Nothing can ever stop His plan for your life. And all you need to do is just trust Him and have faith in God. So don't ever doubt that God loves you guys and because He cares for you and He really has a special plan and a purpose for you. And think about it. If God can forgive Rahab for her past and He can use her for His purpose, then God can do the same for each and every one of us. And guys, God will always rescue those who trust in Him. And I mean it, always, always, He will um, save those that trust in Him. Now guys, I just want to show you guys how amazing God's grace was now for Rahab and how much He rewarded Rahab for her faith. So let me give you guys a quick fun fact. Rahab was now the great, great, great grandmother of Jesus. How awesome is that now to know that God used Rahab to become a part of the bloodline of Jesus himself. So, guys, I really hope our lesson of Rahab in today's story of Joshua and the spies has now encouraged you guys. And I know that I'm definitely encouraged and inspired. So please, guys, remember, no matter what your past is and what your family is like or how many times you have sinned, God now has a special place for you in His plan. And all you need to do is believe in God and He will rescue you from your old life and He will now bring you into a new life, just like He did now for Rahab. Now guys, we can't end off our story without doing a craft, now can we? No, we can't. So come along with me so I can show you our craft of today so we can remember our amazing story and lesson of today. So guys, I'm actually so excited for today's craft as it is so, so easy to make. And all you're going to need is this page and you need to print it on an A4 page. And then you're going to obviously need some coloring and pencils or whatever you guys want to color in your picture with. And you're going to need some scissors and that's all you need for today's craft. And then you need to color it in and after you've colored in, we can start cutting out the rest of our picture and making our craft. So firstly, we have here two spies, as you can see. One is here at the bottom and the one is going down the road. So we need to cut him out and so we can make him part of the craft. So firstly, we're going to start cutting on the dotted lines. And then we also need to cut on the other side the dotted lines and make sure we cut off that white little piece. And make sure you get all those dotted lines out of the picture. There we go. Okay, and then there's some dotted lines also on our picture here at the top and also here at the bottom. So we need to actually cut them as out as well. So what we're going to need to do is fold our page in half. And then we're just going to cut in a little hole for ourselves so we can wiggle our scissors in there and cut on those dotted lines. So we're going to do that at the top and as well as at the bottom. And then we can just cut on the dot dotted line. Awesome guys. And then it's going to look something like this. And now we can put our spy that's on the rope. We can put him on our picture. So you're going to put the top part of it in that hole that we cut in our picture. And we're going to do the same at the bottom. And just slide that in the hole that we cut. And there we go, and then we need to line the rope with the on the one on the picture. And now we have our spy that now can go up and down on the rope. Because remember, those are now the two spies, and now they're escaping because Rahab helped them. And there we see him now going down on his rope that Rahab gave him. So let's actually look at our picture. Here we have Rahab, and here she's in Jericho, and it's a big wall. And there's the two spies, so the one already climbed down. And remember, she hit them on the top of the roof. And then afterwards, she helped them escape. 
So guys, I really, really hope that you guys enjoy making this craft and sharing it with your families. Wow guys, this is going to be so much fun for you guys now to make. And I just know you're going to do so great with this craft of today. And I can't wait to see how yours turns out. So let's quickly have a look at all the crafts that I got from you guys for the 12 spies lesson from last week. Guys, you all did so amazing and you put in so much hard work into your craft. I just want to let you guys know that I'm so proud of you guys for now taking the time to make these crafts so you have something to remind you of our amazing Bible stories and our lessons that we had. So I just want to also say thank you for every one of you that sent in your crafts of me for today. Now remember to get working on this week's crafts as soon as possible so you can send it into me before next week Friday afternoon because guys then I can show your craft to everyone watching next week Sunday and guys how you can share your craft with me is you can just leave a comment with a photo of your craft on the craft post that I make on Facebook right after the lesson but guys for now Let's get ready to praise God with one more song before we end off our lesson. So quickly jump up and enjoy this time with me. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my like God. So big, so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do He made the trees, He made the seas He made the elephants too My God is so big, so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the valleys are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Wow guys, I really enjoyed spending time with you all today and I hope you guys learned something and that you had a great time here at Father's Heart Kids. So make sure now not to miss our lesson next week Sunday as guys we're going to look at how God helps the Israelites to get into Jericho and take the city. And it's just going to be so much fun and we're going to learn so much. But for now let's quickly close our eyes and end today's lesson in prayer. Dear God, Thank you for speaking to us through the story of Joshua and the spies today. Thank you for showing us through Rahab that you can use us and save us no matter what happened in our past. Thank you, Lord, that you always rescue those who trust in you. We just praise you because only you are worthy of our worship. And we pray, uh, pray this in Jesus' name and we all say, Amen. Wow, guys. 
So thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you guys have a great week. And I can't wait to see you next week. Bye-bye, everyone.